hookup baits, a one and a half and a one. But if we get in real deep water and we have a lot of current, I'm gonna change the size of these things. So I'm using the, the two, the two bait rig. I have a triple swivel. So off of the braid, I tie a piece of like 40 pound. Then I have a triple, this is an owner three-way swivel. And then basically on the bottom, I'm putting the one and a half and that leader is probably about, I'd say 20 inches. It could be 22 inches long. And then above it, I'm tying another one at about 12 to 16, okay? Okay, now, I'm, let me pause you right there. I, I, I went to a seminar recently and somebody copied Chad. This, Chad came up with this. I don't remember seeing it before like that. No, but no, with his bait, he's with his original. Ba yeah, well, with his bait. So they were doing it with another bait and I'm, I'm going- They're doing it with swim baits. They don't, but they don't yeah. swim the same. This no. works. This worked for a couple of reasons. First of all, instead of a swivel, they actually made the knot. You don't, uh, -uh. We, you need it to rotate. But they've had that knot for a million years. Right, right. This but is different. This is different. So if you're gonna rig this, you gotta use the hookup baits to get the match. Well, you gotta use the swivel. The swivel versus the knot, this is gonna give you the- The turn. The turn that these baits do. So what happens is these baits will turn down. So let's go into a couple well, things. Because they swim. Yeah. See, these, these baits do this. The so, other ones, the tails are cut wrong and they just go like this. Sergio, let me tell my story. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Can someone give him a box to stand on here? Uh, so here's what goes on with these baits a lot of times. You're gonna be, if the lighter the baits you use, you wanna use that on less current, okay? So as the current increases or your drift in the boat, right? What you're gonna do is you go to the front. I go to the front, I fish in the bow all day long. So if the boat is drifting this way, I cast as far as I can cast that way. I get the bait in the water, and hopefully by the time it gets to the bottom, I'm gonna get a few like three turns drop, three turns drop. You're gonna get bit within the first two or three. As Soon as you hook one fish and you got one fish coming, let the fish move down. Just put your rod tip down, you'll hook the second fish and you'll come up if there's a good school of them. If there's not, you're gonna get a, a good one. I was on the boat with him last year. I think it was on, it's actually on a TV, it's on one of the TV shows. I had two keeper links on one drop, right? So a lot of guys would go, do they really work? Do they really work? These things work really good. The key to this is scent, putting scent in them, first of all. The other thing is when you're fishing it, and the bow of the boat's right there, and I've already, I'm coming up and I haven't been bit, and I'm going like this, and I'm going like this, and I get right here, and I've been bit, but I haven't hooked the fish. As the rod goes this way, just remember, you want to fish straight up and down, or you want to fish at an angle where the boat's coming so you can pull it out of the craft. As you get past that point, and there's an angle, wind up. Because you know what, I don't know what these cost, what do they cost, 12 bucks for two? Yeah. You'll lose them for sure every time. For sure every time. I've learned this. So once that angle shows itself, you want to fish like just about like this, wind up, go to the bow, cast it upwind again. Right? So that way you're constantly fishing the bait to the bait to the boat, get away from the angle, catch the fish doing that way. So you've got a couple different sizes. You're gonna use one and one and a half. When I look at a rod, I'm looking at a rod that's gonna have fairly fast action on the tip, but it's gonna shut down. Why do I fish small stuff? Who has fished a big rod for, for rock cod? Everybody in this room? How does your arms feel at the end of the day? <laughs> Winding a four rod with that, all that stuff. So small bass gear, this reel, if the 300 will hold 300 yards of 30. And there's not much, I've caught yellows on this. This thing puts out 22 pounds of drag. You're not even gonna get near using the drag. So that's one setup that I always have. It's really bass tackle. It's, it's basically bass tackle is what I'm using. For people that don't like those types of reels in the sense that they have a lever drag and they don't wanna mess with it, a 300 Daiwa, Lexa. <coughs> same setup, same rod, just a different reel. The reason I'm showing you this is the deal with this is when it hits the bottom, you just turn the handle instead of going, putting the drag up, right? So if you're looking for something, this is the same, same deal, but it's easier to, to use for those people that don't want to use conventional lever drag reels. So as we go, as we go further with it, like 
sometimes right now we're fishing four or five hundred feet right is that trump again tell him i'm busy <laughs> wife. it's his wife i'll tell him i'm not busy, <laughs> I'm, not busy. <laughs> yeah, I'm not so busy i'll take that call you know what i'm saying so okay he's calling back yeah that's okay i'm busy um <laughs> So right now, Chad, like Chad had, for a while, I thought he had twos and, no, he has threes and fours. Right, the big ones were three and fours. Yeah, so this is a, this right here is a three ounce, okay? I'll fish a solo one of these a lot of times, and you'll catch bigger fish. Again, the scent, he makes this stuff called mermaid milk. The scent is like a must. You squirt that in there every few drops, it's great. Stuff like this, I'm fishing 40 and 50 pound floral on this. The floral has no stretch. The abrasion resistance excellent. You could tie knots in the stuff. If you could tie the right knots, you land everything. But the reason I do with this stuff like that is you're gonna get yellows and white sea bass. So we had, this year I think you had a couple, but I fished with them a few times and we've had white sea bass, you know, to 50 pounds on some of the spots. They eat these big things. So a lot of times when you're fishing them, it's the same way I was talking to you about that, you're gonna let it hit the bottom, put it in gear, wind it up, let it hit the bottom, put it in gear. Well, if someone's marking fish on the meter and the captain tells you, hey, we see a good cloud at whatever, whatever, whatever depth, <laughs> figure out how many inches per turn you have. Try to get up to the depth, because what we did with these last year, we'd hit the bottom, we'd come up about three feet and just fish along the bottom that way. And we caught yellows, white sea bass, rockfish, calicos, whatever. So, <clears throat> Looking at things, again, this is a 400, this is a 400 Daiwa. Only reason I show you this is a lot of people don't like conventional reels with uh, lever drags. These are super easy to use. Again, with a bigger bait, you want a rod that's got a little bit more, little bit more stiffness to it. This thing, this thing will set the hook and you can drive it. So with a lot of the rods, when you're fishing deep, you want a fast tip that goes right into the meat. So you wind, 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 and you wind right into the fish. You think setting the hook's gonna set it? Absolutely not. You gotta turn the handle. As the rod bends with the weight of the fish, turn the handle, then you set the hook once you know you're where you need to be. So I'm using all I-rods. The I-rods I'm using for that kind of stuff is like 764s, 763s. But it's like I'm using fairly fast, stiff rods. And these are the same rods that I use for tuna fishing. Like there's a 764. We were just in, um, the twins and I were in Fiji. I had a fish just under 100 pounds on this rod. It took me an hour and a half, but I did it. You know, it was like this exact setup, a 500 too. So when you're looking at fishing bigger, this is a six ounce. This is what Sergio was talking about. He was talking about earlier. This is brand new. It's a six ounce hookup bait. What we're doing is a six ounce to a one ounce or a one and a half. Why are we using six ounce? When we cast up wind with a normal one, it can take what, 30 seconds, a minute to drop? With this one, it's on the bottom. So what you're doing is you don't even, you can cast, you can just flick it up wind and it will be on the bottom really fast. You guys catch, you know, the, the thing about casting the opposite way, you guys understand that, right? Yes. If you go fishing with me, I think Mark, I, I, start, I use only those big ones, I go, $20, $40, $50. I'll lose five or six of them because you know that's where they want, so I'll, I'll wait too long. And It's the angle. It's the angle. And so if the angle gets like this, bye-bye. It's gone. So what I do is I try to fish straight up and down or close to straight up and down. So all this tackle, you can check this stuff out, but this is a 500 Valiant 2 speed. And the guys will laugh at me while I fish this. Has anybody ever pulled on a 40-pound link cod? Try pulling on a 48-pound link cod with the small reel. They own you. They're gonna rock you. Someone was just talking about it, about getting rocked on them. It's, it's, you gotta get with it, you gotta do it. 500 size reel, 400 size reel, 300 size reel, great. Just make sure you have something you can rely on to go after and do it. So again, a double hookup rig is what I'm using with the six ounce and a one ounce. And when I talk to floor, I'm not gonna mess around with 25. I use 25 a lot for bass. I use 40 and 50 with this stuff. They don't care, they can't see it. So another rig that we use a lot too is the jig. This is just a basic glow jig. I mean, they're made by a whole bunch of different people. What's on the top of this? A swivel, right? See the swivel on the top? 
So then what I'm looking at is I put an octopus. This is from uh, Double A's. It's called a puss. And this thing down there bouncing around, this one's been torn off the hook a couple times. This thing produces a lot of big fish. And you'll see that with this stuff, you'll end up catching big lings on it and stuff. If you get bored of playing with some of that other stuff, get yourself six ounce jigs, eight ounce jigs, drop them to the bottom, hit the bottom, flick them up, hit the bottom, flick them up. When you're fishing a jig, you wanna do it like this. I see some guys go like this, what happens? There's nowhere to set the hook, right? They're like, oh, I gotta, what am I gonna do? Down here, you can whine, get a set. Up here, you're gonna whine, you have no set. So now you're talking about what I'm gonna talk about. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was just listening to you talk about all my stuff. So <laughs> this is why we get along. <laughs> hey Ben, can you talk about the action on the double rig? How you working that? The action on the double rig is pretty much so simple. It's amazing. What you're going to do is hit the bottom, and you're going to wind up, drop. And you're going to wind up. So if three to six winds up, drop. What happens as you're going? If you're paying attention and you're holding everything. You'll feel them pop it. When they pop it, you're gonna put it in gear, wind, you're gonna wind one on. As soon as the rod bends, set the hook, put your rod tip down. If there's more, the second one will go. Like last year, I remember there was one day he was up above me with Chad and I was fishing down below with my friend. And I can't even, I mean, if you guys saw the day, you wouldn't even believe there's it. One, there's one other trick that you can do. You know, he goes down, bring him up. The other thing you can do is just lift it up like this, like really hard, lift up your rod, these things go up and they start dancing on the way down, on the way up. Remember that their slogan is don't blink on the sink. 90% yeah. of your bites are going to be on the sink. However, however, <laughs> if they're not biting really well, these fish get lethargic. Pause. Send it down and count a few seconds. They're already on. When he says send it down, they're already on. When they're lethargic, they eat it when it's on the bottom. It's like a largemouth bass. People don't really understand largemouth bass fishing. I fish huds. I'll throw a hud out, let it sink to the bottom, and I get bit like a Texas worm, and it's a trout imitation. These fish are doing the same thing. They're lethargic. They don't want to move. They All of a sudden, well, that's why I'm saying a lot of times I see people do this stuff, and they're doing it. If it hits the bottom, a lot of times I'd rather wind really fast off the bottom because if you lift, you have to lift and wind at the same time. If you're winding and you feel them, You'll set the hook, it's good. The other thing is remember this, just because everybody thinks they're in one spot. Remember the boat's constantly drifting, so it's all new territory. What's the other thing that's happening? The angle, right? Pay attention to the angle. You'll go through a lot of money of these hookup baits. But I'll tell you one thing with the hookup baits, they truly, truly do work. It's amazing. It's like guys would go, oh, this and that. I mean, I've been doing this for a long time. I've never seen anything work like these things. And it's not like I get paid by these guys, you know? It's like, it's something that's, it's unbelievable the way it works for everything. So, but rock fishing, it's, it's a slam dunk. If someone goes, hey, you want to fish this? You want to fish that? I'm going to grab these every time. Good. Let me tell you something about the angle too. You're, the boat's moving and you have current, right? I see a lot of guys that are, what, what's wrong? What's wrong when your line, instead of being like this, is like this. They're right. fishing in probably 30 feet of water. They're yeah. like no man's land. Right. Eventually, you just don't reach the bottom. You got to bring it back up and start again and go on the other side. So the basics to remember, the deeper water, the bigger the jigs, right? Remember that if you're doing this anyways, don't mess around with small floral fish. Go ahead and fish at least 40, you know? Don't lose your baits and just want to lose your baits. Just make sure you keep them on. The other thing with uh, doing any of this stuff is... Make sure that you're refilling the tube at least two to three times, you know, every 10 minutes so that you have some scent in it. The scent's gonna increase your bite ratio by 60% at least. Swear to God. All right, because you're deep, you got very little sunlight now. You look at a rockfish, they have a big eye. The big eye is there to allow more light. I mean, they capture even the, a minimal thing. They don't see like we see. They do have rods and cones like we have in our eyes, but they don't see colors the way we do. They like the, the, the sparkly stuff. They like uh, that glow in the dark because they yeah. see something. Okay, so they do not see your line. Okay, I don't even use, unless I'm using something like that, I don't even use fluorocarbon. Yeah. 
I, you know, when I'm doing the dropper loop that we all like to do, I use regular mono. I so use fluorocarbon because it doesn't stretch. Right. I don't want stretch, I want hook set, okay? So the other thing to remember too is when you're doing this stuff, they can't tell color, oh, hey, the red one got bit or the blue one got bit. I don't know. And some people say, do whatever you have confidence in, do it. But in this room, I know Ed's fished with this, and I think Tony G's fished with this, and a few other guys have fished with this. They will tell you for sure that when we get going on these things, we can put not one limit, but several limits on the boat. The things work really good. I'm just trying to make your rock fishing better. If you've got something else that works, do it. But okay. those things work. All right, so now I told you that that's how I fish them like this as well. However, last year, I went in my garage and I cleaned up some stuff and, I, and some of the old stuff came out. Guys, we used to go 900 to 1200 feet, 30 hook gannons, 10 pound ball weights. We had made, we made two drops and we went home. Fish were all like this, okay? All right, you guys remember some of that? So for us, shallow water back in the day was probably about 300 to 400, okay? Which is on our limit now. How did we fish that shallower stuff that we fish now? And we can go to 460 now. Two ways. <coughs> you guys remember the? I actually pulled this out of my old tackle box. Okay, look, um, you don't see these anymore. Do they, they still see these? Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, this is, it's heavy. Okay, it's over six, maybe even eight. Old school, send it to the bottom. When you hit the bottom, a couple of cranks and just jig it. You'll, you go fast, you go slow on the way up, it will get bit. That was old school. Yeah. Okay, and, and see what I'm using? I'm using a 300 as well. Okay, and this rod is, uh, I use the fishing syndicates, they work really well. And then the other way is the famous dropper loop. I actually took the, the weight off because um, eh, it was bugging me. <laughs> However, what's wrong with this picture? What's wrong with this picture? Here's the way. Huh? It's a reverse dropper loop. Reverse dropper loop. Okay? And people go, you know, when I fish for these fish, I'm old school on a party boat. I grew up taking your money in jackpots. I didn't fish for quantity, I fished for the biggest fish. That's what I did. Okay? So, whoa, whoa. see, good thing I got it by I got it here. Come on back. Okay, so I use a reverse dropper loop. You're gonna get the reds, you're gonna get everything else, but it's gonna put you closer to the rock. What's in the rock? Ling cod. What weighs more? Ling cod. So if you want ling cod, highly recommend something like this. A nice, it, the, the size of your weight will depend on the depth and the current. As far as the hooks, everybody knows that I like hooks with a swivel, with a, I mean, ring hooks, right? It's the only time I don't use them. What I'm using is what they call the Aki twist. You were talking about being offset. That's offset, okay? If I'm using mackerel or sardine, I'm still going to use this big hook, okay? The one thing about rockfish and anything that's down there, except whitefish, their mouths are huge. They get, that's nothing for them. I want something nice and strong that when I pull, it's gonna go in. So you want something that's in a shark. Put a piece of squid, do whatever, live squid is always good. I don't use strips. I use, you know, if you get the frozen one, ask the guy, can you give me one, a full one? Put a full one on. Just make sure it's well on so you can use it several times. This is old school. For this, I don't use fluorocarbon. And the reason is, fluorocarbon trying to do a, um, a dropper loop is almost impossible. I mean, you can do it, but you can't get the length you want. It doesn't, it doesn't work good. Uh, down there, you know, uh, six feet of uh, monofilament, it's not going to stretch very much. That's all I'm using, just, just the leader part. What, 60? Yeah, I'll use 40 or 60. Okay, this is thinner. I was doing something else with it, but you got to use 40, 60. Don't even think about going anything lighter. You don't, well, you can, but you don't need it. So you want to maximize the catch. Okay, so these are the ways that are proven. The other way is having a two hook canyon, not my thing. Okay, I want big fish. All right, one hook. 
one presentation instead of two. Okay? Is there anything we missed? What questions? You guys got questions about anything about, you want to talk about? Yeah, rockfish or anything else you guys want to talk about? So I got a question. Huh? Sergio, so, you know, I've seen you use that reverse dropper loop and a sand dab for bait. So are you using <laughs> are you using that offset Aki hook? And where are you hooking the sand dab? Depends on the size of the sand dab. Okay, but I'm putting the whole thing in the head. I don't care if it's alive or dead. So I'll go because I need to make sure it doesn't come off. Right. But you've seen me do it. I mean, you know, everybody catches those little sand dabs. Tell them not to throw them back in the water. Put them in the hand worms. That's number you, one for rock, rock, link for, cod. For link cod, yeah. you've, you've seen me. I, I, I see them, I go nuts. I've actually used the big ones and gotten bit. Uh, but yeah, I, 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 you, they're, they're like a halibut, so the mouth is on the side. You can do it if you want, like an anchovy. Hit the bottom, come up to the side, but I don't like the side. So I go from here between the eyes. Comes okay. up above this, and the longer the shank, the better, so you have more piece of the fish. It, it's not about letting them swallow it, okay, and hooking them. It's about the bait not coming off my hook because we're going a long way, okay? okay. And they will rip at it, rip at it until you. Okay. Let's show lead the leader deal. You guys can see the guys in the back of the room. They got lots oh, of leader yeah. back there. Martin's got all Make the leader sure possible good. over there. He's got all the hooks and everything else back there. Um, anything else? Let us know. You can hit me up. Go ahead. So I was at the Fred Hall, uh, one of the seminars. And one, of the, one of the captains mentioned this, and it kind of took the room by surprise. He said, ringed hooks are not to give the bait oh, light. I reaction. heard that guy said, right. he said it to protect the knot. Don't stop! And I, thought, <laughs> I started thinking about it, and thought, to protect the knot, it's moving the knot that much no. farther away from the teeth. No. What's it's, he talking it's, about? It's, it's the key, yeah. it's the action of the bait. Yeah, yeah. I'm with you on that one. It's That's been it. that way forever because you know what we used to do all the time is in the old days, we would take a hook and I would tie uni and cinch it up and it was a ring, it was a ring hook with the line and as soon as I set the hook, the knot would go right back down to the, and boom, it was the same thing. But ring hooks <laughs> are to make the fish look livelier because without a lively you. fish, you're not going to get a bite. So let me tell you a story. You got, you got, who knows Dennis Yamamoto? Okay, that's old school owner, okay? According to him, he's the one that came up with the rings. And I used to fish him before we had ring hooks out here, and he would have a friend of his actually do the well. I remember take that. Hooks, I remember and he that. had the ring put in. Eventually, they started coming from Japan that way, okay? So what, what does it do? All the stress is on the ring, but the hook's doing this, okay? So even if this was tight, the hook's doing this. Yeah. So the bait's able to The fish the looks like he's alive. You gotta you got understand, and I'll, I'll say this. Some of the boat captains are set in their ways and you'll never change them. In fact, they see us with some of this stuff and they think we're crazy. They yeah. want you to use a dropper loop with two hooks. That's just the way that, so yeah. Hey, God bless them. God bless them, but you know what? A couple of those guys learn. If they open their eyes and they get the blinders away, they learn, and then there's something new to talk about. I had a couple, two years ago, I had one of those guys, and at the end of the day, he was just like, but those things really work. I'm like, okay, you do this every day. And I mean, I when the hookup baits came out, everybody criticized them until they used them. Now it's all quiet. Everybody yeah. has it. Okay. Um, the other thing I want to tell you is if you go rock fishing, well, I didn't bring one, but this kind of tells you the story. Okay. And you see the 400? He's got Daiwa, I use the Okuma. It's the line guy. Okay. I didn't feed it through because I was going to hurry to make you the leader. But uh, I'll use like a, a Pen Fathom. So you, all you got to do is turn the handle and it does it for you because. 400, 500 feet of this is a pain in the butt. Okay, make sure that you put tape on your finger because this stuff will cut you. Okay, when it gets wet, you won't even feel it until the day after and you're cut pretty good this up. Okay, uh, is there any other questions? Come on guys, nothing? Or you Come on. I got a question. You yeah. got fish on those hookup baits, kind of like a yo-yo jig style, throwing them up? No. No, because yo-yo, you're, you're going to... You're going no, down. I mean, not the reeling part, just the casting part. So when the boat comes over, yeah, no, straight up Yeah, no, it's the same, exact, exact same yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exact same thing. Always the opposite way that you're going. Yeah. Now, if, if we... They may even open up 
steeper for us. We're talking about that. Right now we're 460 feet. You can yeah, cast as far as you want. You're never going to get there. There's got to be some power pots caught on that stuff. Yeah, there is. But they're they're thinking they'll open up to 600 feet. That may be coming in the next year, year and a half. So when if you're going to cast, I guarantee you can't cast far enough to reach the bottom by the like like Ben said. But you'll be close. But the biggest mistake is the angle the wrong way. You can kiss them goodbye. I don't know what the six ounce costs, but the, the three and the fours cost $25 a piece. I like to use them in tandem like this. That's 50 bucks. Okay, and, and, and I think you've done the bubble up $25, $50, $75. You know, eventually, I'm, okay, I'm stopping. Okay, because you just can't, you can't do it if you're drifting too hard. Yeah. But it's very important to keep bouncing and get off. Same thing with a dropper loop. Drop the weight. Don't sit there. Get a couple cranks up. You're already in range. It doesn't have, the, the weight doesn't have to be on the bottom waiting to scratch into a rock and get and see you later. You don't want that. Okay, just get it up. You know, just thinking about it too, which I haven't done, but I was just thinking about what you're saying. You could fish a sinker and take smaller hookup baits and fish them as a two two ganyan rig and drop them down on the sinker. You'd probably stuff them doing the that. The real too. small ones. I'd probably do the three eighths. The reason is the current down there is going to move them for you. We used to do that with uh, the scampies, remember? Yeah. We do a scampi <laughs> over here with a weight and just let the tail get, it moves on its own. Okay, but I, I like to add the little the jerk to it. Okay. Um, we can go straight up and drop them, but I'm, I, I like to jerk off a little bit as well. But it, it's when you fish them, you'll you'll find a, a sweet spot for you. At the end of the day, we can tell you anything, but you're gonna find your sweet spot. You're gonna say, you know, like like Ron, like Ron. So yeah, like Ben See said, my what's his name? Yeah. <laughs> like Ben said, you're gonna find something that makes you comfortable. Rod, reel, jig. It's not gonna matter if it's blue, green, yellow. Okay. Confidence, confidence. Yeah, I mean, you know, the old days with jigs, I mean, they used to say they used to paint them for us, not for the fish. Who's fish with Teresa Sampson? Okay, Teresa Sampson fishes what? She fishes a solid six or eight ounce jig all the time and just blows people away on the bow of the boats. Teresa Sampson, I hope you hear that. You're the best. <laughs> you, 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 you rule. So, <laughs> hey, we appreciate the opportunity to come talk to you guys. You guys have no questions. I'm out. He pressed out. Are and you I'm not going back to, to San Clemente? <laughs> I'm going back to San Clemente. Okay. So, thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Thank you. And that's a wrap.